Hey everyone, Nightlight9 here, and in this video, we're going to go through the new banner. So, the Final Fantasy VII Rebirth crossover officially started last night, and with that, um, we've got a new event here, and we've also got a new banner. I want to briefly look at uh, the crossover event and just kind of explain um, some things I like about it, what I thought. So, I wasn't too far off. Um, I don't want to, I don't know if I should necessarily give this away if anybody hasn't played. So I'm going to say, if you don't want a spoiler, skip forward about, I don't know, 45 seconds to a minute at this point. Three, two, one. Okay. So if you're still here, I guess you don't really care if I spoil anything. Um, the only thing I would really want to say is this. I had made a guess that maybe they'd be adding adult Sephiroth and then later kind of backtracked and said, I don't know. I was really excited. Maybe that, that seems a little ridiculous. I wasn't that far off. I mean, they didn't give us adult Sephiroth. They've done it as a guest. Um, but, you know, the fact that we can we can play as Sephiroth, honestly, um, it, it is pretty cool. It does feel pretty awesome. I will say that the fights aren't that inspired. <laughs> um, there's, there's not a lot of challenge to these. However, the cutscenes, I think, and the actual story that takes place in between and, you know, the quality of that makes up for it. So that's kind of where I am on that. But the only other thing I really wanted to touch on right now for this is the new weapon, Ashura. And uh, it is for Sephiroth. It is Fire Surge A. I don't really know why they decided uh, to give him another fire weapon. But it's whatever, because I don't really think people are going to be maining this. I mean, OB-10, it's 290% fire damage to all enemies. I mean, that that, that kind of sucks. Uh, but the boost magic attack is really nice, right? We've gotten a lot of weapons that boost attack or boost physical attack. Not so many that boost magical attack. And even less that boost magic defense. In the very beginning, we had several uh, event weapons that boosted magic defense. But then, for the last, like, two months... Every single event weapon has boosted physical defense. So I do think that this is going to be make for a really nice sub weapon. Uh, it really helps the magic teams. You know, um, other than that, you know, I think it's a fine weapon. I, I'm, I'm happy to have it. I think that this is perfectly good. And that's about all I really wanted to say on that. Um, the rest of the shop is pretty standard here. You have your four star guaranteed tickets, your regular tickets. Uh, I do really like that they've included Sephiroth specific weapon parts here. Those, I mean, I feel like <clears throat> we don't get a lot of him, Cloud, Tifa, you know, like some of our main cast, we don't get a lot of their weapon parts, but we've been starting to. Uh, we had Tifa in the last event, and now we have Sephiroth, so I'm really excited about that. Okay, without further delay, I will get into what I think about the new banner. So we have all these step ups, which one thing I did want to address real briefly as well is that I was talking about, I think in my last banner review, that I didn't like the way they were doing their step up system. What I didn't like about it was at the end, it was like a series of, okay, five star guaranteed weapons. That's great and all, but like nobody's doing a step up just for a guaranteed five star. Okay. And some extra like whatever mithril or what they want is a specific weapon that's guaranteed. Here, they have made the Guide Gloves a guaranteed weapon on Step 7. So, I I like that they've, I don't know, taken that feedback. I'm not saying they took it from me personally, but I think that, you know, clearly they've, they've made some improvements to their Step Up game. And I think that that's needed, because now at least there's a reason, like, other than just, hey, I'm a whale and I'm going to draw and this is a 50% discount, there's an actual reason to want to get to Step 7. Okay, so with the crossover, first thing I will do is I will look at Tifa's new outfit. And, you know, it's weird because I do think that the boots could be a little bit fancier. I think this skirt could be a little bit fancier. I think everything is kind of plain. However, with that being said, I love the outfit. I think it looks really good. I think it suits her really well. Um, you know, I just... I don't know. I really like it. I think it really works. And I think it's probably her best looking outfit. Uh, I think the FF9 collab outfit was probably her second best one. I don't know. The Christmas one's really cool, but it's just, you know, it's Christmas. So do you really want to be wearing that, you know, 
any other time. Probably not. So I do like this. I, I think it's pretty great. Um, other than that, though, what it does, uh, boost physical attack plus 10. I think that's pretty good. Uh, I wouldn't mind it if it was HP either, but I think this is this is perfectly fine. The physical ability mastery, though, is extremely interesting because this is new. This does not exist prior to this outfit. And what it does is it gives a flat plus 15% to physical ability damage. So it's kind of like physical ability potency, but better in my opinion. The reason I think it's better is because physical ability potency caps out at 80%. I believe that's at level 7, maybe level 8, but I think 7. And so 80% is the highest we can raise our physical ability potency. So like her previous, the Amaranth garb, uh, that added to physical ability potency. The problem is it's pretty easy as we start to get these weapons higher and higher that have physical ability potency, pretty easy to get that maxed. And so you don't really get anything else out of a costume if it's already maxed, if that's what it's doing and that's what you're going for. This, however, because it just adds 15%, basically raises the, the threshold on how high we can get that physical ability potency. So if you had it capped at 80 and you have this on, now it's 95. So I really do like this. I think for the non-elemental damage or physical ability damage meta, this is the best costume so far for that. And so I really do like that. Um, as far as the guide gloves go, man, I don't where to start. They're amazing. They are not identical, but essentially they are Tifa's version of the Zidane sword that we got in FF9. And anybody who has that weapon or was around for FF9, and maybe some of you that weren't around but have seen it used in videos or other content, that sword is, in my opinion, and probably many, many players' opinions, the best weapon in the game. Yeah, and it remained the best weapon in the game for more than two months. Um, this weapon equals it. That's that's pretty much the easiest way to put that. I mean, it starts out at 650% physical non-elemental damage. Uh, by OB6, you're looking at 1140% which already eclipses every other weapon in the game for percentage damage, even at OB10. Uh, but then you get to 1300% at OB10. Now, the main differences between Guide Gloves and um, Zidane Sword for Cloud is that this gives more physical ability potency, but less physical attack. And I'll show a quick comparison of those two so you can see that is the primary difference uh, between these weapons. The other difference, though, is in the materia slots, um, where Zidane's has multiple physical attack boosts. This has one physical attack boost, one random fire attack boost, which I do <laughs> truly think is quite random. However, I don't mind it because I think any of these boosts like this are pretty strong, especially because, you know, it allows her to be a little bit more flexible. We still have a physical attack boost if we need that for Materia, but being able to also kind of work in some element stuff if necessary, I don't think it's bad at all. The Sigil boost for X, I think Sigil boosts are always great, um, although they are a little bit niche because, you know, maybe you don't need X Sigil. I still like that better than just putting another physical attack boost or something like that on there. What do I think about this weapon? I think it's freaking awesome. Um, you know, not to mention I'm a huge Tifa fan. So, you know, that does factor in. I use her in as many of my lineups as I can, but I started using her for utility purposes. With this, there's a really good play for saying that like she could be the number one physical damage dealer in the game. Um, if you have Amaranth's Claws. That'll be like, you know, as far. And, and also you're looking at like self-contained, right? Because obviously you could take Cloud with his Zidane sword and, you know, somebody like Glenn with the pumpkin lamppost and boost his <laughs> physical attack, right? So that would put him even. But if you only had that one character, especially if you're going for co-op or whatever, if you have OB6 Amaranth Claws, you can, she can boost her own physical attack 
by high potency in one shot, and then swap over and start using this Zangin Fist for insane amounts of physical damage. And that alone makes her able to hit harder than Cloud would with the same weapon because she can boost her own attack high potency in one shot. So I think it's insane. Now, the question is, is should you pull? The first thing I want to look at, though, before I go into that is Red's outfit, the Hellhound. And I've got a lot of thoughts on this, but I'm going to boil it down to something pretty concise here. This is the main thing that it gives, right? Fire and ice resist plus 20%. Fire and ice ability damage plus 15%. Now, it's, okay, starting with the fire and ice resist plus 20%, I think that's perfectly fine. Why not? I think it's pretty good. I don't, I rarely end up building teams with sub weapons for the resistances. Um, I did in the very beginning of the game when I was like trying to clear Shiva, you know, um, and everybody was still rather weak and hell that, that really helped now, not so much, but it's okay. I'll take it. And I don't think it's bad. I mean, Hey, it's a plus for sure. Now the fire and ice ability damage is where it gets really interesting. Obviously Arcanum, you know, damage is plus 35% mastery is plus 20. And then you've got this at plus 15, which feels considerably weak. In fact, I'm sure anybody that has any of the mastery gear knows that it feels considerably weaker than having an Arcanum gear on. You know, Sephiroth, for example, um, if we look at the uh, the fire stuff that they got in January, Cloud with his Arcanum always just feels like he hits way harder on the fire damage front than Sephiroth does with his Mastery. That's just how it runs. So this being even weaker than a Mastery, but giving two different, you know, uh, elements is, is interesting. Um... I don't think right now the content needs something like this because where this would really shine is not where you only have two elements, maybe not even where you have three, but if you were going through a crisis dungeon that really required you to have four elements or more, I mean, and you had to be good with them, then something like this could come in handy because it's splitting two elements. However, most of the time, I feel like with the content that we've seen, I'd rather have somebody really strong in one element versus splitting it here like this. Plus, Red's not really known for being a damage dealer, and I feel like this is kind of something you would want to put on somebody that's going to be doing a lot of damage. Red is usually more the utility role. So, combining that into one kind of... I guess, you know, one concise thought. There's a lot going on with this. And I feel like because there's a lot, it's giving a lot of value, right? You have a total of 40% worth of resistances and 30% worth of attack boosts. That seems really awesome. However, I just don't know if practically, right, when you're using it, if it's actually going to be as good as it seems. I think it's probably not, but uh, time will tell, I guess. Okay, so I guess where it comes down to here is whether or not you should pull for the guide gloves. And this is what I'm going to say. I think it really depends on two primary factors. One, where your account is at the moment, as in who do you usually use in your lineups? What kind of lineups do you like to run? What have you been going for already? And two, how many resources have you saved to be able to do this? Why do I say that? Okay, first, if you weren't around for Final Fantasy IX and you don't have Zidane's sword uh, and you like to use Tifa in your lineups, then I think, man, this is really good. Um, you know, even just getting it to OB1, I believe it does. This goes up, right? So you're looking at a 700 plus percent physical non-elemental damage weapon. I mean, if you don't have like Sonic Strikers or something else set up for Tifa, then yeah, it's it's probably going to absolutely be worth it to get, you know, get it to Obi-Wan. Um, if you do have Zidane's sword, though, on Cloud and, you know, whatever, I don't think that this is a must pull unless you can get it to at least Obi-4. That's how I feel about it. Why? Well, we know it's limited. 
And I can tell you from the Final Fantasy IX banner, I got Amaranth's Claws to OB5. It took me two months. It wasn't until this most recent event with Tifa where we got the Tifa weapon parts that I was able to OB6 it with weapon parts. And I didn't even need a full 200. I only needed like 80. So knowing that, I would say, you know, it could easily be three to four months before you're able to get 200 weapon parts for a character. Maybe not. It depends. You know, obviously how often they're going to run that character. But on a character like Tifa, especially the fact that we just got parts for, unless you have them saved, you know, if you need, for example, if you're at OB4, the goal is to get this weapon to OB6, right? I mean, and that's, I think, a really good goal. It shines here. It looks really great. 1140 is huge. But if you're not to at least OB4, it's probably going to take you more than six months to get this to OB6. And by that time, I mean, is it still going to be relevant? I mean, the game isn't quite six months old yet. And we're already seeing a lot of power creep start to kick in. So that's kind of where I'm at. I really want to say, try to go for OB5. If you don't think you can at least get it there. Like I said, if you really need the weapon, right? Um, like if you don't have a good physical non-elemental damage, then sure. But maybe it's just to hold on, like hold on this one. See what the next banner is. Because there's almost certainly going to be, I would say, probably two more banners. And I would imagine that Cloud and Sephiroth are going to get featured at some point on one of the next two. We've got till March 3rd. That's two weeks away. Um, I would imagine we'll at least see one more banner before March 3rd. So that's kind of my official advice, um, what I think you should do. Now, if you just love Tifa, like me, then by all means, pull away. Uh, you can see here with my crystals that I did quite a few pulls. I won't ruin it. If you want to see it, I did live stream it last night and you can go. You just got to go to the live section and uh, you can take a look at that. I think the pulls start about halfway through. Anyway, that's everything I've got on this banner. I'd like to know what you guys think. If you're going to be pulling, if you have pulled, how you did. And uh, if you watch my pull video, then, you know, we can kind of discuss that, uh, you know, whether whether we're in the same boat or not. And so that's all I have. Thank you all for your support. Subscribe for future content if you're not already. And as always, thanks for watching.